Hello, everybody. This is Brooke Warner, and I am here with Linda Joy Myers. Hi, Linda Joy. Hi, Brooke. Uh, hi, everyone. Welcome to our discussion about inheritance. Yeah, we're doing things a little differently this time. We're going to have a conversation uh, between the two of us about what made Inheritance a best-selling memoir. And so we're excited to be offering this conversation today, as well as the four-week class that we're going to be teaching coming up in about uh, three weeks. So here we go, Linda Joy. I'm, I can't wait to talk about this class with you and this book with you because of how much we both admire Danny Shapiro and and how much we both adored this book. Oh, yes. I mean, I've read it uh, more than once. I read it twice and scanned it another time. And I have to say my most recent reading experience had me in tears, uh, had me just glowing with admiration for her techniques and all the things that she did to make it such a great book and a best-selling memoir. And so let's let's dig in and look at how she did it. Perfect. Yes. And before we get started, we have a little quote here from Danny, and this is from her book where she writes, I tell my students who are concerned with the question of betrayal that when it comes to memoir, there is no such thing as absolute truth, only the truth that is singularly their own. And what I like about the quote is that because Danny is a memoirist and, and a teacher of memoir, throughout the book, she has these moments of permission giving and interweaving her own experience of, of being a memoirist and a memoir teacher. And so I thought it was fun to lead off with that quote before we enter into the first question that we're going to be discussing today, which is what most wows us uh, about inheritance when it comes to craft? Ah. Well, um, would you like me to start? Um, yeah, why don't you start? Okay, all right. So I was wowed many times. I have to say that, um, and we're going to dig into some of the things I'm going to mention too, and even further in this discussion. But I was I was wowed by her structure, how she laid things out, how she used scenes to paint a picture, if you want to learn how to paint a picture with scenes and description in a grounded way that just, it pulled me in. I felt like I was watching the movie of what she was mm -hmm. writing about, you know, it, it was so And we often and teach that in our class too, <laughs> right? I mean, our longer right. class, we have that part that's called how to write your memoir like a movie. And so she's doing exactly that. Right. And and then, um, you know, obviously, I think another element of craft can be uh, the research that she did. And, and so there was so much of that woven in, of course, which we'll we'll get into more, of course, as we teach the course. And, and then the uh, the way that she, you and I teach about takeaway and reaching out to the reader. And so there were many, many times that she was reaching out to us, and uh, we'll talk more about that universality in a few minutes. Yeah, I agree with you. I thought that one of the things that wowed me the most was the the deep resonance that I felt with every aspect of her story, that we talk a lot about this notion that your story is your own and it's also not necessarily unique. And what I like about Danny is that she has this very unique story, right? I mean, although it's becoming more and more common that people are finding out that they're not exactly who they thought they were because of DNA tests, but she could have written this story as a very, you know, I'm special kind of story. Like, can you believe this? And she does weave aspects of like, you know, the, the uncovering of her story. But what she is amazing at doing is giving you the reader the opportunity to feel her story with her to find the points of intersection and connection and for me that's really what makes this story such a success I mean I think it would have been a successful anyway because there's a sort of almost like a voyeuristic aspect to oh my gosh I can't believe this story but she is so permission giving and saying you know this is kind of a human story it's all of our stories the way that we think about our genetics and our dna and who we are and where we come from and then what happens when that gets upended 
Um, and even for people who know exactly where they come from, I think there's a lot of really interesting moments about the nature of identity and heredity and genealogy and all of those other things, which you, of course, have written about. <laughs> Uh, yes, I have. In, in, in my books, I mean, I was uh, um, not uh, claimed by my father and, and to some degree my mother you know, in different ways, and I do explore that. And it was very much my own. I could resonate with her obsession and her search. I had the same search. I spent 40 years trying to research and find out details about my parents and my grandparents that I didn't know. So I was like, oh, yes, Danny, I know this. I know this feeling. You've just got to know. You've got to keep digging. Right. It's so, so fascinating, the different points of intersection. Well, so let's talk about what resonates with us most about the storyline and or her themes in this case, because she has these various themes that she is connecting to and pointing back to throughout. Mm -hmm. Well, I noticed uh, several themes. I mean, there's actually so many more than I can really talk about, but um, I, I found that, um, I mean, the, it's a very philosophical book in a way, but without putting you off, it's a very embodied, you're very embodied, you're inside her body and her mind as she is exploring what does it mean to be a person, like you said, and, and she even talks about the essence of being a person is connected to how you were made. <laughs> I'm like, well, we mm -hmm. all know this, but oh my goodness, the way that she angles into that will make anyone, everyone think about that, even if they they know their parents and they, they know their parentage. And also the theme of it's a spiritual, there's a spiritual layer to the book as well as the search, you know, the, the obsession, the obsessive search for truth and, and I love that quote that you used because you know she she starts to dissect what truth is anyway I mean the whole book is about well what was true what is true well now that I know this now what is true and what is true about me and then if I doubt that well then what's that about so it, it's kind of a it goes spiraling around in all these different explorations yeah, and while you're talking, one of the things that strikes me is her careful choice of words. She has a lot of repetition as well. And and sometimes I think when we're teaching our students, people will say, well, I've already said that, or I've already shared that idea, or this, you know, might feel repetitious to you in some way because it's your story. But she actually circles around quite a bit to reiterate uh, you know, I noticed that because you said you read it twice and I actually read it and then listened to the audio. And in listening to the audio, it was very interesting because I noticed that conscious repetition of some of the ideas and storylines, you know, around like, what did my parents know? And I am the secret. And, you know, this strong desire for her biological father, Ben Walden, to acknowledge her, you know, just to say, I see you, you know, this, the, she talks about these smoke signals, you know, I am here when she reaches out, when her, her half-sister reaches out to her. And there's just these moments, uh, you know, of, of kind of carefully chosen scenes and the weaving of a story through a relatively, uh, you know, sort of a chronological timeline, really, that is interspersed throughout with all kinds of different moments of both flashbacks and memories, and sometimes just interspersed with things that just happened the previous week. And so I thought that structure and the way she had a facility with the chronology was really quite beautiful. Yes, it's a very layered story, and and she enters, she she dives in and comes out and um, brings up. <laughs> images and actually memories. She uses her journals also is one of the things that she talked about and she talked about how she was trying to reassemble herself given this new information. I mean, it's the stuff that we're all doing when we're writing memoir, you know, we're mm -hmm. assembling, reassembling, disassembling, taking that mirror and, and putting it at different angles. I mean, it's, she did it all, yeah. Definitely. So let's talk about Danny's narration, what we think about 
where she is in time, I mean, I just seeded that a bit. You know, she enters into the story at age 54. Uh, so it's a very present adult story. And then she reaches into the past to support the front story, to make sense of the front story. She doesn't at all take for granted that anyone has read her previous memoirs, for instance. She's right there and you needn't, you needn't have read her previous memoirs in order to make sense of this story. So uh, I'm curious for you, Linda Joy, in particular, because sometimes we'll hear from people, uh, other teachers actually, who say, well, you need some distance from your story. Um, you know, you, you don't have enough distance to be able to write about this yet. And clearly, Danny didn't do that. And, um, and I know you have some feelings about it. So I'd like to hear, you know, your thoughts on people who kind of want to write where they are. Right. Well, I've been teaching writing as healing and writing as a way to come to understand yourself for about, I don't know, a little over 20 years at this point. And, and so I've very much used writing and memoir writing uh, as a way of, of helping support people to do that. And, you know, when I would hear about that distance thing, I mean, I certainly understand it when it comes to doing some later drafts and some editing and all that. But, you know, that white heat of, oh my gosh, what is happening and how do I come to understand it? I mean, you have her looking into a mirror on in chapter one, trying to understand who she is, which I thought was such a beautiful beginning. And immediately in the next chapter, her husband's running up the stairs with some news about her DNA. And, and at that moment, you know, the pedal is to the metal. I mean, she is, you know, shocked. She is, you know, motivated to find out what is going on and what we see. And she, she said that she wrote it. She wrote everything down she was going through while she was going through it. And that this story is essentially that. I mean, she obviously had it edited and she, she added layers perhaps, but you can feel the heat of the need and the desire to to explore herself and to understand herself more, even in the throes of just feeling like she said, disassembled, you know, who am I? Um, I, I just, I mean, I think it's one of the engines of this book is this, this desperation to understand and the pain that she was feeling. She was in pain when she was writing it, you can tell. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and also this pain of trying to understand what did her parents know? What did her parents deny? You know, that, that felt like a, as much a pain, you know, this, this yeah. deep quest to really sort out for herself, what, especially what did my dad know, you know, her, the father who mm -hmm. raised her. And, and one of the things I really admired about the narration is how she follows this continuous line, you know, especially in, in the moment she finds out about the DNA test and moving forward over the course of the next days and weeks, she keeps circling back around to it. You know, it has this very strong through line, but she departs from her story, that front story, with such ease. And one of the things that I hope people will do if they haven't read it or they go back and read it is track the front story. You know, look at the way that she circles back around, you know, look at the way that she really stays in that, you know, point A to point B story and then how she transitions so seamlessly into these other past moments. And like I said, some of those past moments are the day before. You know, some of those past moments are a month earlier. Some of those past moments are when she's a toddler. And, and I found her ease with time so inspiring because I just see the ways that our students sometimes feel very confined. And so I, I want to encourage people to take a look at that seamlessness. It's really inspiring. Yeah, she makes it look easy. <laughs> and uh, She certainly yeah, does. But she's, of course, an experienced writer, and um, we all, this is why we teach these, these best-selling courses, is that we can learn. I know there's a debate out on the internet right now, and it's a re-debate. It's debated over and over again. Can you teach writing? Yes. <laughs> Brooke and I are like, <laughs> can teach writing. Uh, of course you can, we, yes. Yes, right. So, and we can learn from these amazing books, and that's what's so beautiful about it is is we're being touched in the heart by the story and also inspired by the craft. 
Absolutely. And, and that uh, leads us to the next slide, which is about her subtitle, A Memoir of Genealogy, Paternity, and Love. And we often talk about the notion that a subtitle does the heavy lifting. A subtitle tells you what the story is about. Now, of course, she could have gone with many other things. There were secrets there was other you know big themes that she might have addressed here but she went with genealogy paternity and love and i was just curious i mean this maybe touches into theme t-h-e-m-e a bit but how do you think that her organizing principle you know kind of does organize around these themes or these ideas that she presents in her subtitle well she totally touches in on all of them. I mean, genealogy from page, the next chapter, the first chapter after the mirror <laughs> moment uh, starts with the DNA test and it goes through personally around genealogy and universally in that this is how it works and that she gives percentages of how to translate a DNA test. She has research on genealogy she has research on artificial insemination and paternity and what does it mean are you a what kind of father is a father who's your biological father who you don't know but then you had a father that raised you and, that, and she did and but you know the complications of of all that and what does that mean and and also they have a son and so it connects <laughs> you know generationally um, with their family and love, I, I noted that at the end of all, she has several, four parts to her book. The end of uh, part two and three, for sure, the last word is love. So she mm. I began to wonder, you know, did she add that later or did it just turn out that way? I just thought it was, uh, it is the whole book is about love and the nature of love and what does it mean to, and to love and you know, how did, did her father and mother, what was their relationship? What was the truth about them and their love? And then the whole thing about the new father. I mean, uh, she touches on all this and more, you know, the other sub themes include spirituality and truth and all that. Right. So, yeah. And one of the things I love is she searches out the different spiritual gurus to make sense of her experiences, the various people along the way who say, you can choose how you handle this. You can choose yeah. to look at it as a deficit or as a gift. You know, you can see yourself as flawed or you can see this as adding to the experience of who you are. And she kept circling back to that notion, you know, of expansion rather than this somehow making her less than or diminishing her. And I thought it was very generous because for anyone else who has a similar situation, you know, uh, whether they're finding out something about their own lineage that was not this, what they thought it would be, or all these many, many people in the world who are donor conceived, you know, I thought she was kind of reaching out to everybody and saying, you know, we have a choice as to how we want to live with this reality in our lives. Yes, and that's part of that universal message, and it's your personal struggle, and that's another way that she reaches out to all of us. Yeah. Well, and let's talk do? about that then. Right, mm -hmm. so let's talk about the universal, because we're, we're ending on this uh, appropriately, you know, these moments of universal takeaway and connection, which you and I, Linda Joy, always teach in our classes. I mean, we teach that the takeaway is the heart, and Danny is already so good at this particular uh, way of writing. She is, she's uh, excels at takeaway and connecting to the reader. I already talked about it a little bit, you know, this way that she makes her story universal and resonant. And so what was, you know, the thing or one of the things for you that just felt particularly resonant or um, personal? Well, it, it, it was, um, who are you? Our, and how are you a person and how do you know yourself to be a person when you don't know exactly who you are or where you came from? And like I said earlier, that's a theme in, in my life. If somebody says, well, you're not mine, but you know, everybody else says, well, yes, you were. But it feels a little bit like the denial or, or the absence of being claimed 
or uh, or having the story about who you are be accurate um, or be true. What is truth? It brings up truth. I mean, I found myself weeping at certain parts of this book. I was so surprised. I had to stop reading it for a little while, and I went, okay, now I've been through my stuff many times, <laughs> but okay, how is she touching me? And it was that being claimed by Ben that I'm like, oh, he, he, he allowed, he allows this, you know, and, and also the way that she felt loved by her father. And for me, that I didn't have that at all. And so I found myself deep into her story around fathers and, and around, of course, truth and around the theme of what is love you know, and how, and blown away a bit by how she made me feel the search for her love and the need for love. I mean, I look at this famous woman who has all these wonderful books and it looked like a perfect life, right? And she's weeping because she is trying to figure out who she is. And I was just so moved by that. Mm. Yeah, that's so interesting because that's so true. She has that moment of just saying, you know, I've always been outside. I've never belonged. I've always felt like something was wrong with me. And I think that's such a common experience. And then people do sometimes come to memoir exactly to make sense of that, right? So I yeah, love that as well. And then, excuse me, go ahead. No, oh, no, go ahead. Say what you're going to say. Check on. Um, <laughs> Yeah, sorry. We work with people who do come to us with stories like that. Well, I'm not sure what the truth is. You know, yeah. and this is my pain. This is my particular pain. <laughs> and, you know, so we were a little bit, I don't know, I want to say midwives, but we are, you know, by the bedside kind of at times of the memoir writer holding their hand saying, okay, you can, you know, it's all right. It's in there. It's in there. Your need and your desire to write this and to explore this subject is important and we're here with you. Absolutely. I mean, I think we are midwifing memoirs with our students and, and that students also, or memoirists actually should give themselves permission to seek out a, a midwife, you know, whether that's in the context of a coach or a class or something like that, because it is a huge deal to try to attempt to make sense of all this stuff. And it can be just so um, helpful to have someone saying, you know, yes, yes, keep going. You're allowed to say that. Or even, you know, I'm not shocked. I'm not bowled over, you know, by your experience, because sometimes people are so fearful that, the thing that they have to share is just going to be so devastating to people. And then sharing it with someone who is not devastated, you know, who says, it's okay, keep going. You know, that that's a really profound moment. Yes, very much so. And so um, what was it and, for you? What was it oh, for Oh, I you? was just going to say, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I For me, the I mean, you know, and a lot of people who listen to our classes know that I'm absolutely obsessed with takeaway. I look for it in, in these books and any memoir that I read. And so when Danny has these moments of just making sense of her experience, you know, of talking in these sort of broader, as you said, more philosophical and musing ways. Um, but for me on a personal note, the, the connection that I felt was because I have a donor conceived son and, you know, Many, many, many people in this world are donor conceived human beings. And I just felt the way that she unpacked it and explored it and shined light onto it was really, really meaningful. I think it's going to be a profound gift to, or already is a profound gift to people who are, um, you know, kind of in that world. And so what I thought for her is just, you know, what are all these various places that you're touching into that touch people, you know, across different moments? And I think her real cognizance that she was touching people in those moments, you know, that she was telling her story, but that she was also in many ways speaking for people who um, have this experience. I, I found that to be very affirming. You know, there's this one place where she goes to see the doctor at the sperm bank and he says, well, why would it be traumatic for you to find out later in life 
that you are donor conceived. You know, he couldn't even wrap his mind around it. And right. and I felt that she kind of gent gently educated him. Well, here's the reason why. And um, you know, she just is is really has some beautiful moments that she articulates things that I think a lot of people have felt and experienced. Yeah, she did. She <laughs> she um you know, she had a lot to say from her personal connection as she did the research, and some people resonated, and some of the scientific types are like, mm, this is just science, you know, and no, no, we're right. human. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There are souls, many souls uh, that, that this is going to touch. So, uh, so thanks everyone. We are uh, we wanted to have this discussion today to share with you that we're teaching this four week class on inheritance. And today we just kind of talked about some of the things that moved us because we are going to do a deep dive into real teaching of the book, but to show all of you how to do some of the things that Danny has done in inheritance. And so you can see here, class one is honoring the story that won't leave you alone. Class two is harnessing self-understanding. Uh, class three is weaving in the past to make sense of the present, which we're just talking about a bit, you know, this notion of kind of going back and forth, informing the front story with the back story. And then the power of universal writing, which is what we ended on, but we're going to really go specific into Danny's reflection and her uh, takeaways so that you can see, oh, okay, this is where she's doing it. This is how you do it in our understanding of memoir and all the memoirs that we teach and read, uh, that is the part that really has people hanging on, you know, that universal writing, that capacity to reach beyond yourself. So to me, that's really where the meat is uh, and, and what makes also what makes readers want to read and what makes publishers want to publish. So um, take a look at that. It's September 16th to October 7th, Mondays, 4 o'clock Pacific, 7 Eastern. And then also just want to note that we have this Day of Memoir Magic coming up on September 13th. These are the early bird prices, 99 and 149, and you can get both classes for 199. But I am really excited about Lydia Yuknovich. Um, Linda Joy, I know we both admire her so much, and she is going to be teaching a class about storytelling and letting go of fear. Uh, you know, she she's another person who experienced the world as a real outsider, as a misfit, and she has written this gorgeous memoir, The Chronology of Water. If nobody, uh, if you haven't read it yet, please do, and then join us on September 13th. And all these classes are recorded, and so you can, uh, if you can't join us on the date, uh, you will you sign up, you get everything. So please uh, let us uh, support you in your memoir journey. Yeah, absolutely. So this is uh, an opportunity for, for us to share a bit with all of you, and we hope to see you. Uh, it is late August as we're posting this and we're hurtling into September. So we have a few more weeks here. And so mm -hmm. we'll see you all in September. And thanks, Linda Joy, for doing with this with me today. Uh, it was really wonderful to talk about this book that uh, we both love and, and have been so moved by. And see you in class. <laughs> Bye, everybody.